In this video, we're going to look at if-else statements. And if-else statements are two-way decision structures. We're gonna take one Boolean expression, and if the Boolean expression is true, we'll run one block of code. If it's false, we'll run another block of code. Let's take a look at the structure, and we'll also take a look at the flowchart for an if-else statement. So the first part of an if-else statement is just an if statement, like we're used to running. So if some statement inside the parentheses is true, then we're going to run whatever statements are in this block of code. The addition that we're adding on is that after the end of that block, we're putting an else. So an else can never exist without an if. So you put an else statement, okay, and it's not going to evaluate a Boolean expression again. It's going to say, uh, if this statement is true, then it does this stuff. Otherwise, I like to use the word otherwise because I think sometimes it's easier for people to understand. Otherwise, I'm going to run the block of code that's down here. And this is the statements that will run if it's false. So in a flow chart, if we're coming down our flow of our code, uh, we get to an if statement, an if else statement. We're basically making a decision using looking at a Boolean expression as normal. And we have two alternatives. If it's true, we're going to run some statements that are in the block of code for the true part, or if it's false, we're going to run the other statements under the else block. Okay. When there, when both of those are finished, we'll continue running the rest of our program underneath it. Okay. So it's a two way decision structure, one way for true, the other way for false. Uh, here's an example. Let's actually pull it up and actually run it and take a look at it. Uh, so this is, uh, asking the user for a radius, enter the radius, and it's getting the next double, storing it in a variable called radius using all the things, scanner, things that we've done before. Okay. And if the radius is greater than or equal to zero, I probably had an extra space in there, we're going to take the radius squared times pi and store that number in area, and we're going to print out to the user uh, the area for the circle of radius, whatever we type in is, and then we're gonna print the area. We've seen that part before. But if radius is not greater than or equal to zero, meaning the user typed in a negative number, uh, that will evaluate to false, which means we're going to run the else block, and it's going to run the code between these two curly braces, uh, and it'll print out system.out.println, it will print negative input. So let's do a test. Enter the radius, if I put five, the area for the circle of radius five is 78.53975. No problem there. If I run it again, and this time I'm gonna put in negative five. Okay, this tested false, so it came down to the else block and just printed out negative input. It's not gonna calculate the area for a negative radius. So that's if else statements.